Hello and today I'm going to be building my own crossover network for my speakers. Um, luckily I've uh, got some parts that I can salvage from my old Denon speaker set that this, the cones blew on so I've got some spare components there that I can use and I've tested them and the coil off the um, crossover is 5mh, 5.0mh which is exactly the amount that I need to cut this the bass speaker off at 120 hertz which is what it's um, regulated at so that's good news so we haven't got to buy those because hard to find those are and there's a couple of resistors in there I don't think I need to use because I don't want to uh, octave down the speaker's uh, loudness I think they're alright the way they are but I'm definitely going to build a two-way one one for the bass, the sub bass and one for the mid range now I don't need to do a tweeter crossover because the tweeter that I've got in my speaker at the moment is uh, it's already got a um, capacitor built in um, which is designed for it so I don't need a, a crossover for that so out of these parts, out of these old Dennett speakers I've got quite a few components that I can use but the main one as I say is this 5.0 mh coil and this is what reduces um, the high frequencies in the subwoofer and the way it works is um, your speaker input goes in one end comes out the other on your positive terminal and as the sound is passing through and sound is AC current by the way and as it's passing through it will filter off high frequencies anything above 120 Hz will roll off which means it takes stress off the speakers and um, stops the speaker trying to produce sounds that it can't and stops distortion so with this um, piece of um, circuit board I brought two of these because I've got to build two crossovers with these pieces of circuit board I'm going to build two crossovers for each one for each speaker two times two way ones and um, the end result should sound pretty amazing because they'll be tailor made for each cone in the in the speaker cabinets and this is something you can't do when you buy crossovers off the shelf um, they're pretty close in specifications but you can't get them perfect and doing it this way you can get the sound exactly the way you want it so what it's all about really is um, sending the right amount of bass and treble frequencies to the adja adjacent speakers in the cabinet and making sure they're not trying to produce um, frequencies they're not designed to. So that's that's the main objective of it. You know that's what a crossover is all about. And um, as I say, um, speaker output is AC current. So this is what explains why all the capacitors in here are bipolar. And uh, standard um, capacitors they have to be connected in a certain way, or they blow but these it doesn't make any difference which makes sense because if you cross the speaker wires on the back of your cabinet the caps won't blow it'll just be out of phase now once I've fitted this coil onto the circuit board I'm going to need this fine gauge um, copper wire that's been lacquered now this isn't going to serve any electrical purpose what this is going to do is wrap around the coil and hold it in place because it's quite heavy you know this is near enough I'd say about 12 ounces in weight something like that and it is quite heavy there's a lot of weight to it so if I just solder it to the board and I don't use any of this to st stable it in place and keep it in place it will eventually come off the board and break the tracks on the board so that present it prevents that so that's a good tip if you're going to if you're going to do one of these and make your own crossovers with heavy heavy components I highly recommend you do that wrap it around the part in question and then solder it in underneath to keep the part in place that way you don't need to use any glue um, because as I, when I took this one off the board it had a load of this white gunky glue underneath that I've got a well I don't know I don't probably won't need to get it off but it does look a bit of a mess but uh, not to worry it's not doing any harm but doing that way is a lot cleaner I've got my test leads all there ready to test my components before I put them all on there and uh, should be a fun little, fun little project for me to do I did try these crossovers the way they were 
and the reason I'm breaking it down and building my own out of it is because they didn't sound right whatsoever. They were making the subwoofer roll off at about 140 hertz, which is way too high. You know, that's in the mid-range territory, and I don't want that for the subwoofer. I just want the subwoofer to com to produce nothing but bass. You know, as it's a the three-way speaker system, each speaker will have its own frequency range. But as I say, the tweeter has got its own capacitors, so I won't need to build a crossover for that, as they're built into the tweeter itself. Um, the part, I think, the pile driver pro they call the tweeters, and they're very nice sounding tweeters. Three and a half inch in size. I'll just give you a quick look at those, what they look like. That's the tweeter. Um, very nice sounding tweeter. And that goes all the way up to about 21,000 hertz. Um, which is, you know, hell of a lot. I mean, you, you won't hear over 20 anyway, but, you know, it's there. Next, I've got to do now these mid-range I've got to put a mid-range one in each cabinet because the ones I tried in there they, while they did work they weren't high enough um, powered they didn't have the required um, power response I needed they were only like 60 watt and I could do with some mid-ranges in there some three inch mid-ranges that are about I'd say at least a hundred each and the subwoofer is uh, rated at 600 watts at four ohms that's another thing I'm glad about. All these components are tuned to 4 ohms as well, which is what the Denons were. But even if you were building this with an 8 ohm speaker, you just put a 4 ohm resistor on there and it knocks it down. I think, if my logic serves me correctly, or is it the other way? Yeah, you put a 4 ohm with a 4 ohm speaker and it bumps up to 8 ohms, that's right, yeah. Anyway, these are the circuit boards I got off Amazon, and they, you know they're quite reasonable. I mean, they cost a pound each, and the things you can do with these is unbelievable. So uh, I should be using block connectors to connect the wiring up inside. Just put a bit of glue on there because obviously all the sound pressure that's inside these speakers—I mean, two of them—is over a thousand watts, and you know that's over a kilowatt in sound, and that's a lot of noise. <laughs> So I don't want anything vibrating inside. It's all got to be secured properly and screwed to the back of the cabinet. Um, there might be a couple of resistors in there. I don't know that I might be able to use for something. Um, if not, I'll just take them out and put them in my parts box. Because they're all very high quality components. I'm not sure about that coil. I haven't tested it directly. I'm not sure what the rating is on that. But this one, as I say, is 5mh. And uh, this one's 0.16, and that's that's way too low. Um, that'll probably be okay for the mid-range, but that won't knock any anything significant off. But, uh, I'll do two or three videos about this, and I'll, I'll let you know the progress, because uh, I'm excited about doing this, building actually crossovers that are specifically designed for your speakers, and not off the shelf. Should sound pretty amazing. I'm not too impressed with these speaker cabinets, by the way. These are the Skytech ones, and they're really they're not very thick, and it causes a lot of reverberation inside. I mean, I've already had to put carpet in there, as you can see, and it's still not doing its job properly. The backs on them are rather thin. Um, only nine millimeter wood MDF, and I, you know that's I could do with half inch really, half inch MDF or half inch plywood. So I probably after I've done all these um, components, I'll be looking to to get some to buy some decent cabinets. This is only a, a, you know a, just a project, just to see if I could do this, and yeah, it, it's all coming together well. I mean, even the baseboards in there, they, you know, they're too short. I wouldn't recommend you buy any of this Skytech stuff. I mean, it's all right for you know if you don't want anything too loud, but and they're not mega quality. This is why I've had to replace basically all the speaker cones in it. <laughs> and basically, I should have just started off buying, buying my own cabinets and then working from there, to be honest. That would have been the best bet. But, uh, you know, they were only budget. £40 for a pair the cabinets were, so you can't complain. But uh, until I get something better, they'll do for now. Um, the terminal, the speaker wire that I've used inside, that's uh, going to go into the crossover is a really heavy gauge. 
you know it's really good quality cable I think it was about uh, £3.50 a metre this stuff and I brought it when I was living in Stoke-on-Trent and uh, I got that from Amazon as well it's really good cable I mean it has to be for carry that kind of voltage you know down your wires but uh, as I say don't want any fires because that can be quite easily be achieved with speakers if you go using the wrong cable you have to make sure you've got a gauge thick enough for the speakers you're using and with 600 watts each speakers you know that's not peak music that's you know 600 watts nominal that's a lot of wattage the pair of them are giving over, over a thousand watts which is of pure bass and mid range and top end that's quite easily enough to power quite a big pub so <laughs> that's the kind of um, sound you can expect from these when it's all done and completed I mean, I've already put a video on these, a test sound, a test video of what they sound like, but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. There was just wasn't any mid-range there, due to those pretty crappy drivers, really, that need replacing. Plenty of bass, plenty of top end. In fact, there was too much top end. I've had to limit the, um, I've had to limit the tweeter with a resistor, a 50 watt resistor, just to knock it down a bit, you know. It was too much high end for the amount of mid-range there was and it was sounding a bit tinny no, not tinny, that's the wrong word to use just out of balance too much um, treble to the bass ratio if you know what I mean this is why I've had to go down this route and just build my own crossovers from scratch I'm going to enjoy doing this actually and uh, it's going to keep me busy for quite a few hours um, the beauty of doing something like this is the wow factor of the sound when it's done because you'll have a completely unique speaker that nobody else has got. I mean, everybody's buying off-the-shelf stuff. And I'm sure you're aware that if you buy any stereo system out of the shop today, they always give you crappy speakers. This is why I'm all for building your own. So that's why I've gone down this route. But I'm very pleased with these circuit boards, actually. For a pound each, you know, they're going to do the job. Fantastic they are. They're all numbered at the back. It is A to X and 1 to 30. So, you know, you, you know where you are when you're soldering things. Even though it's not going to be the most complicated of circuits when it's done, it's only going to be about six components, but they're going to be quite big components. So, and these will do the job fantastic. So, this is part one of the video. I can't say yeah, if there's going to be a two and three, but there'll definitely be a two. In fact, sorry, I'll start again. I can't promise there's going to be a three, but there'll definitely be a two where I've built all these and put it together and I'll give you a quick sound check and uh, if you've got any comments whatsoever leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you I checked my um, YouTube a couple of times maybe five, five, six times a week so if you've got any comments whatsoever give us a shout and uh, I'll try and help you out if I can ok thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching this video and to give you some inspiration to do this yourself. Thank you very much.